Uh, I said it before, I'll say it again. You're playing pool with Minnesota fats. The plot lines of some shows can get boring and repetitive. Euphoria is not one of those shows. This show is captivating and it's funny. Some scenes are difficult to watch, but it's great and it's an important show. I would have covered season one, but unfortunately, I was too high to do so at the time. I've been sober for 276 days. Not that anyone's counting. So let's do this. Euphoria Season 2, Episode 1. As is almost always the case, Euphoria Season 2, Episode 1 began with a flashback character. In this case, two characters, Fezco and Ashtray. Fez and Ash. Fez's father beat him. So one of his grandmothers shot his father in both of his legs and took Fez under her care. Granted, I use the term care loosely. Grandma raised Fez as a drug dealer. One time, a man conned her by giving her aspirin, so she beat him with a crowbar. When Fez ran up to stop her, she accidentally hit him in the head, and Fez carries that scar to this day. Grandma had a health incident, but instead of calling the police, Fez drove her to the hospital. Unfortunately, it took him too long to get there, so she's now effectively a vegetable that he has to take care of, and Fez feels guilty for that. Fez also takes care of his little brother Ash, but again, I use that term care loosely. Before her accident, Grandma took a little kid from a client as temporary collateral, but the kid's mother never returned, so that kid effectively became Fez's little brother. And since the kid once tried to eat a cigarette out of an ashtray, he goes by the name Ashtray, or Ash. And Ash is a little gangsta. Ash snuck up on Fez's dealer and smashed him over the head. Unless I missed something, he killed him. Ash also smashed the dealer's sidekick in the nose, a dude called Custer. But Fez and Ash spared Custer's life, so Custer introduced Fez to his dealer's dealer, Lori. Lori's crew didn't know Fez and Ash, so they held him up at gunpoint. They also found Rue and Custer's junky girlfriend in the car, so they brought them up and searched all of them for wiretaps. Once Lori was comfortable, she began a new partnership with Fez, and she was not the only one. At the New Year's Eve party, Fez got into a conversation with Rue's childhood best friend, Lexi. They are nothing alike. Fez smokes and Lexi hates cigarettes. Fez is unread, whereas Lexi is a well-read nerd in a good way. Fez believes in God, but Lexi does not. Outside of Rue's sister, Gia, and Rue's sponsor, Ali, Fez and Lexi are two of my favorite characters in the show, so I, for one, am hoping that they continue doing their thing because they could both learn valuable life lessons from one another. And Lexi will definitely be a good and much-needed influence on Fez. So, Lexi was confused by her feelings towards him, since he is not the type of guy that she thought she would have a crush on. As a result, she kept smirking like, what am I doing? It was pretty cute. But then Fez got up and smashed Nate. So Lexi may be second-guessing Fez, but to play devil's advocate, Lexi doesn't yet know why Fez attacked Nate. The reason is Rue. In the prior season, Rue had asked Fez to scare Nate with a gun. Fez didn't do that, but he did tell Nate that if he didn't stop messing with Rue and Jules, then he would kill him. Nate then ratted out Fez to the police and they raided him. So Fez decided to start out the year by teaching Nate a lesson. And it all began with Fez threatening Nate for the sake of Rue. So Lexi may now be scared of Fez. They are very different people. But they also have one major similarity. They both love Rue like a sister. So when she finds out why he did it, Lexi may look past this act of violence. Now let's take a look at Nate's other problems. Nate and Maddie are no longer together. Neither are Cassie and McKay. So when Nate came across a sad Cassie at the convenience store, he took advantage of her vulnerability. He offered her a ride to the party, and on the way, he drank and drove faster and faster, over 100 miles per hour. As a reminder, Cassie's father was severely injured drunk driving. Granted, she may not know that, since the story that Rue told via voiceover is that he got into a car crash driving home from work. Regardless, Nate drinking and driving was a callback to her father. At first, the reckless driving scared Cassie, but it also turned her on. So they got to the party and hopped on the good foot and did the bad thing in the bathroom. But then Maddie showed up, so Cassie hid in the shower as Maddie went potty. Cassie then continued to hide as Maddie hung out in the bathroom with the dude who sparked one up. Travis actually saw her and told Maddie that there was a drunk girl in the shower. But Maddie left the bathroom not realizing that it was Cassie. So Maddie does not yet know that Nate and Cassie hooked up. And neither does McKay. When McKay showed up to the party, Nate gave him a big old hug. Nate was probably loving the fact that he was just inside McKay's ex 
and McKay had no idea. McKay and Cassie had a one-on-one in the bedroom, but after her abortion and after hooking up with Nate, Cassie felt like a bad person. So she implied that she had hooked up with someone and McKay walked out. Nate then got all up in his grill, asking whether or not McKay hooked up with Cassie in the room. Again, Nate was probably loving his little secret as he towered over a kid whom he used to call his friend. Nate's got issues, but here's the thing. In the special episode part one, Ali told Rue that people shouldn't ever look at someone as past redemption. Because if that person comes to believe that they themselves are beyond redemption, then it's an excuse to keep making the same mistakes. An excuse to never grow. An excuse to keep hurting people. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I don't think I could ever forgive Nate in real life. But I've forgiven Sir Jamie Lannister and Sandor Clegane for much worse. So call me a sucker, but I'm pulling for Nate's redemption. Last but not least, let's touch base with Rue and Jules. In the special episode part two, we learned that Jules' mother was an alcoholic, but she got sober, so Jules' father invited her mother back in with them. Unfortunately, her mother relapsed. That is why Jules got smashed at the Halloween party last season. Jules sank into a dark place and started thinking about taking her life. That's why she ran away in the train, but Rue did not go with her. And sadly, Rue relapsed the night that Jules ran away in the train. So Rue is once again suffering from the disease of addiction. Rue was high when Fez brought her to the dealer's house at the beginning of the episode. She was told to stay in the car with Custer's girlfriend, and Custer's girlfriend did heroin, which she kept in an Altoids container. Later on at the New Year's Eve party, Rue was hanging out in the back of Fez's car, thinking about Jules. But then she noticed the Altoids container on the floor. So she went inside and blew some heroin while a new character called Elliot did stuff as well. And fun fact, Elliot is played by Dominic Fike, who is also a singer. If you have never heard it, check out the 91 second interlude on Halsey's album Manic. It is so sick, as I commented a year ago. Fun fact number two, Halsey is an anagram for her real name, Ashley. And fun fact number three, Ashley is a good friend of Sidney Sweeney, who plays Cassie in the show. But back on track, Rue nearly overdosed again. Her heart rate slowed down, but Elliot gave her Adderall, so she came to. Jules then found Rue outside, and Rue admitted that she had relapsed the day that Jules had left on the train. Rue doesn't yet know this, but Jules was afraid of Rue, or rather, Jules felt overwhelmed by the idea that she was the only thing that kept Rue from doing drugs. So presumably, if Rue were to get sober again, Jules would once again feel responsible and trapped in a sense. But for the time being, they started off the new year together with a kiss. However, Rue was high, and she had told Elliot that he was her new favorite person. So basically, Rue may now have options, Jules or Elliot, or both. But let's not lose sight of the bigger picture. In the special episode part one, Ali asked Miss Marsha how long she'd been clean. 17 years. She never thought she'd be able to say it, but she said it with pride. Ali then asked Miss Marsha what she thought about dating in the early stages of trying to get clean. She said that at the time, she was interested in both dating and getting clean, but she had to not be in a relationship so that she could focus on her sobriety, because that's what she wanted, and she didn't have enough energy for both of those. And I wanted to get clean. I just don't really plan on being here that long. So, from one addict to another, Rue. You need to focus on getting sober. Do it for your friends. Do it for your sister Gia. Do it for yourself. Just like Ali, I've got faith in you, Rue. Baby, trouble don't last always. And it doesn't. If you want to make a change. 